Hello everyone and welcome to the 2020 Academic Lettering and Advanced Scholar Recognition Program. This is our opportunity in this slideshow to honor each and every one of you academically successful students. Now for those of you who don't know, my name is Dr. Chris Page and I am principal of the Highlands Ranch High School. And I am so honored to take this opportunity to recognize each and every one of our students who has done above and beyond the amount of work that's needed to be recognized as a scholar. Now, often we talk about athletics, we see people on the court or on the field, and we get to celebrate them with their great achievements. Or when we talk about activities, we see people on the stage or with their instruments, and we get to really honor the great work they do. But often it's overlooked the academic success, the work that's happening every day in your classrooms, sometimes at your kitchen tables, and even on the road while you're reading those long novels trying to prepare yourself for the next week of school. Well, today in this slideshow, it is your day. This is your time and our opportunity to thank you for all the great things you've done to represent Highland Ranch High School. Now I want to start off by saying thank you first and foremost to all of our students and the amazing ways that you represent our school each and every single day. I also want to thank your parents for their dedication in getting you those tutors and letting you stay up all those extra hours at night to get that work done. And most importantly, I want to thank our staff who has gone above and beyond to hopefully encourage you and to motivate you to be your academic best. Now we've got a great slideshow set up for each and every one of you, and so I hope you're able to sit back and enjoy it and enjoy all of the accolades that are gonna be poured out. Now it's gonna run through a little bit fast, but every fall we tend to have an academic award assembly, and this slideshow is our chance to do it in the age of COVID. For all you upperclassmen, thank you for representing so well, and for all you underclassmen who are watching this, continue to work and push towards that next great achievement academically. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to some of our other presenters and just once again, thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome again to our slideshow for our academic assembly. Hello, I'm Darren Withy, athletic director here at the Highlands Ranch High School. Every year here at Highlands Ranch High School, we recognize the top three students from each grade level with the most community service hours. Thank you for helping to recognize the students who have gone above and beyond in our community to serve, to learn, and to grow as they have accumulated over 1146 total hours. They have shown great dedication to their community and we appreciate their commitment to lead by giving back. Dr. Dorothy Height was an American educator who worked as a civil rights and women's rights activist. During her lifetime, Dr. Height spent much of her time in service as an activist and a leader. She once said, without community service, we would not have a strong quality of life. It's important to the person who serves as well as the recipient. It's the way in which we ourselves grow and develop. Dr. Height's poignant words continue to ring true today. All Douglas County students are required to complete 20 hours of community service for graduation. However, here at the Highlands Ranch High School, we have many students who embrace the value of service and take their work to new levels. Today, we would like to recognize and honor outstanding students for their continued service to their community. We would like to recognize the students with the highest number of community service. At this time, we will recognize the top three students from each grade level and the number of hours he or she has earned. Grade nine, Seely Page, 122 hours. Asher Bordelais, 93 hours. Cohen Cassiter, 30 hours. Grade 10, Ian Avedisian, 135 hours. Reagan Pettit, 155 hours. Elizabeth Coyle, 220 hours. 
grade 11. Daniel Shore, 141 hours. Haley Allert, 198 hours. Jordan Miller, 290 hours. Grade 12, Carlos Cuevas, 291 hours. Rebecca Jacob, 377 hours. And Isabella Lupo, 478 hours. Congratulations to all of you and thank you for your service. Hello Highlands Ranch High School students and community members. I'm Debbie Corbawi, Dean of Students here at Highlands Ranch High School. Every year we love to hear from one of our outstanding teachers. This year, Mr. Nikki DeBolt has been chosen by the HRHS administration as our faculty speaker and he will be sharing his wonderful words of wisdom for our students today. Mr. DeBolt, we appreciate you and all your contributions to our students here at Highlands Ranch High School. Hey everybody, I am Mr. DeBolt. I teach computer science and I've been at Highlands Ranch High School for around 23, 24 years. I've been here for quite some time. And unfortunately, I don't know everybody out there. Some of you guys may know me, some of you may not. And I wish I could get to know everybody, but I can't. So if you do know me, you know you kind of know my personality, you know who I am. If you don't know me, I'm here to congratulate you. Uh, I'm here to congratulate you on your amazing academic accomplishment. And I know looking out there, and by the way, this isn't live, right? This is pre-recorded, but I'm going to pretend that I'm looking at you right now. I'm looking at the vast amount of students out there. And I just want to say that there's some of you, probably this is you guys are really excited. This is your very first time you've won something. You've worked really hard and you've accomplished something for the first time this year. Very first honor roll, right? Very first award that you've received academically. And I'm sure others, this is like your 20th, kind of have a stack of them in your room, right? Oh, another award, yippee, and you, and you throw it in the corner and it collects dust. Regardless of where you're at, you know, it's still an accomplishment. And, you know, with that being said, you're doing something right. This would be different if I was talking to a group of students that were struggling or, you know, they're not really motivated. Uh, they don't see the value in grades. They don't see the value in education. And, you know, it's a different kind of a speech for them. But for you, you've, you've figured out or you got something figured out so far. And I don't, I don't know what that, what that is. I don't know what your motivation is, but you've got, you're doing something right up to this point of, of your life, which is, which is amazing. Um, you know, your high school career is four years, and as an adult, I can honestly say I've never heard this ever. Nobody has ever said this to me. I wish that I would have done worse in high school. That's something I've never heard. I hear the opposite all the time. You know, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done better in high school, but I've never heard anybody say, gosh, I really wish I can go back and do things worse in high school. You just don't hear that. You always hear the other. Well, you guys are in a prime time in your life. You have that choice right now where you can continue on this path that you're on, which is amazing. And you'll see all the different advantages that come across when you are completely successful at school and you don't have to be that person later on that says you know i wish i can go back in high school and do things differently i wish i would have been more involved in things i wish i would have done better in my math class i wish i would have you know really excelled in my english class i really love reading or i wish i would have taken that tech course that uh you know somebody told me about that i now i'm now i'm interested in web design and then you know i, I could have took i could have taken web design in, in high school you know so that's something that you guys got going for you is you're doing something right so I want to do kind of kind of a little virtual activity with you, and and you don't you can be you can be very upfront about it, or you can kind of hide it if you want to. It doesn't matter, but I'm going to try to find your motivation, and then we're going to kind of try to analyze and realize why you're doing so well, and what what you can do maybe in the future, and really really recognize your motivation for being at school. So you know, make two closed fists. You can put them in your lap. You can hide them, or you, you can make it as obvious you want or not. But as I go through these, if it really represents you and you can really identify with it, then kind of put a finger up. 
And you can put, again, you can be discreet about it or you can be obvious, it doesn't matter. So the first one is like, we're trying to figure out your motivation, right? So like some of you guys are successful in academics because you know what you want to do with your life, right? So if, if that's true, you know, put, put a finger. Like, you know what you want to do. You, you, want to, you want to become an engineer. You want to become a doctor. You want to become a fire, a fireman. You want to be, be going to the police force. You already know what you want to do. So you have that direction and that's why you do well at school. Number two, you actually enjoy school. Like you actually have an intrinsic enjoyment of going to school and being involved and you just love being here. So put up a finger if that means you. Um, you do well at school because your, your parents are gonna get mad at you. That's, that's an honest reason, right? Like I do well at school because if I know if I, do well, if I don't do well, my mom and my dad, my grandparents or whoever, my guardians are going to be mad at me, right? Put up a finger, that's true. Number four, um, you play sports or you're in a club or you're in activity, you're in a CTSO and you do well at school because you want to be eligible. So number four, you do well at school because you want to be eligible for other activities that you enjoy at school. Uh, number five, you you know, just in, 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 in Haley, you have this motivation to be competitive. So like you're just a competitive person by nature and you want to beat everybody else and grades is just another form of competitiveness for you and you want to beat that person next to you, right? That person gets an 80, you want to get an 85. That person gets an 85, you want to get a 90. So you're competitive. Um, number six, you actually believe what adults tell you. Like you've grown up your whole life and you've heard grown-ups and adults tell you that, you know, you have to do it well at school because you, that that's how you're successful. That's how you open up doors for you. I mean, uh, school is very important because it means that you, it, when you graduate, you're going to make something of yourself. So you got you actually believe when somebody says that, and you've heard you've heard it probably a million times in your life from teachers, from parents, from everybody. You actually believe it, and that's why you do all well school. Um, number seven, you just want to be rich. You've heard that before, right? People who do all well school become wealthy. They um, you know they they're able to get higher paying jobs, and you just want to make money when you grow up. That's number seven. Number eight, um, you want to make a difference. Like you want to go into a field and you want to actually make a difference on society. You want to make it a better place. Um, you want to help people out. Um, yeah, you just want to get out there and it just improve society in general. Uh, number nine, you promise something. You promise you promise somebody or something that you are you're going to do well at school. Let's say your parents didn't have the same advantages as you do, right? And you probably heard that from them. They say, you know, when I was at, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't have the advantage. I had to work, you know, I, I couldn't go to school. And so they're working hard. So you have the opportunities that they didn't have. And so you've kind of made that promise to them. You want to prove them, you know, right, that you can do this and, and, and do better, um, uh, better than them as far as in their eyes. Um, number 10, you know, you just want to, you know, you want to go to a higher end school. Let's say you already know what college you want to go to. Um, you want to go into Harvard, you want to go to MIT, you want to go to CSU, you want to, you know, want to go to ACC. You already have a vision of higher ed that you want to get into. So, you know, you have to do well at school and get good grades to be able to go to the next step. So that's 10 different things. So if you're looking down in your lap and you've got like 10 fingers and you can hit all those, that's amazing, right? But even if you have one, you know, right, that's one of your motivations. So some of you guys may have one motivations or 10 motivate motivational things of why you're doing well at school. But regardless, any reason why that you're doing well at school needs to continue on. And you've got to keep on finding that intrinsic motivation to keep on doing well. Because everything you're hearing from everybody else, why school's important, is exactly what you're doing right now. Because you know for some reason, one of those reasons is hitting home to you, which is in creating that internal drive to keep on doing better and keep continuing getting good grades and continuing seeing the value of your education. I love it. I always joke around with my kids that, you know, my whole goal as a teacher is that you guys go off and you become more successful than than I am, right? I say, go off, man, make, make, make more, which is not too hard to do. But, you know, go off and, 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 and enjoy life and have fun. And, uh, you know, don't be that person 10 years from now that says, you know, I wish I would have done better in high school. Again, congratulations. Uh, I'm Mr. DeBolt. Um, you can find me upstairs if you ever want to come and talk. See you guys later. Hello Highlands Ranch High School. I'm Caitlin Philemon, the Assistant Principal here at Highlands Ranch High School in charge of academics. I have the proud pleasure and honor to be able to explain to you the academic lettering 
This is a traditional honor we are proud to recognize here at Highlands Ranch High School and have done so for many years. Our academic lettering is based on the cumulative all semesters grade point average or GPA of 3.75 or higher at the end of the previous school semester. Thank you all for joining us to celebrate the students' exemplary academic performance here at the Highlands Ranch High School. Students being recognized for earning an academic letter receive a letter, pin, and certificate their first year, and each year following they will receive a pin and certificate. Those students who have earned an academic letter will be receiving their letters, pins, and certificates in their first hour class this next week. Congratulations to these students.
Hi, my name is Kelly Gore. I'm the Activities Director at the Highlands Ranch High School, and it is my great honor to introduce our next speaker to talk to us about the importance of National Honor Society, Ms. Anna Smith. Hello, I hope everyone is having a great day so far. My name is Anna Smith, and I'm this year's president of National Honor Society. Here at Highlands Ranch, NHS members participate in various community service projects throughout the year. We work closely with organizations within the community to promote service and character within our members. NHS also promotes academic excellence at Ranch and requires certain academic criteria for membership. Now, in a traditional school year, NHS members act as tutors for the school and run an annual blood drive, exhibiting both scholarship and leadership. This year, with drastically different circumstances, NHS members have faced the challenge of leading academically in the face of uncertainty and change. From virtual meetings to voter registration, NHS members this year rose to the occasion. Although a lot of our activities may look drastically different, NHS members still play a very large role in the community. Members of NHS continue to donate blood and dedicate their time to the community service projects, even in the face of a pandemic. It is these four basic pillars, service, character, scholarship, and leadership, that the National Honor Society is founded. As such, it's not surprising that many of the students being recognized today are future or current members of NHS. Today, we are honoring some of the best, brightest, and most dedicated students in our school, and they all exemplify the tenet of scholarship. All of these students have proven tremendous perseverance in the face of adversity. Each one of them understands the value of a rigorous education, and their hard work has and will open the doors for scholarships, opportunities in higher education, and success in their futures. On behalf of the National Honor Society, we congratulate you on all of you for your outstanding academic achievements over the past few years. Your work ethic, perseverance, and knowledge will serve you well wherever life may take you. For seniors, congratulations. You're almost near the end of high school, and we're all excited to see the legacy of academic excellence you leave on your school and community. For juniors out there, we encourage you to keep up all the good work because soon you'll be following the footsteps of the class of 2021 and you'll be making your own path as well. And for the sophomores out there, you are off to a tremendously great start and we look forward to your application to NHS in the spring. For all students, I urge you to recognize and thank your parents and teachers for their help. It's their hard work and support that allows you to be honored here today. With that being said, thank you for your time and congratulations. Hello Falcons, this is Mrs. Philemon, Academic Assistant Principal here at Highlands Ranch High School, and I am pleased and honored to be explaining the National Merit Scholarship Recognition Program. Each year students take the PSAT and MSQT, which is the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test. There are a couple of areas in which students are recognized nationwide. The first being National Hispanic Recognition Program. These students are scoring in the top 2.5% on the PSAT and MSQT among all of the Hispanics and Latino test takers in the nation. The second recognition is National Merit Commended. About 34,000 commended students throughout the nation are recognized for their exceptional academic promise. Commended students placed among the top three to 4% of more than 1.5 million students who entered the 2019 competition by taking the 2019 PSAT National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test last October. Due to COVID-19 exceptions, allowing the recent October test to also be used to qualify, we are waiting to hear back on who qualifies for National Hispanic Recognition or National Merit Commended. The third National Merit Qualifier is the National Merit Semifinalists. These students will continue on in the competition to finalists and scholar status as the school year progresses. 
Their final status will not be known until late May. We are proud to announce our National Merit semifinalists, Gretchen Becker, Ethan Hedrick, Emma Nezevic, Luke Mega, and Julia Regroot. Congratulations to you all, and we wish you the best of luck in the competition. Greetings, Falcons. My name is Carrie Stuminger, and I'm one of the assistant principals at the Highlands Ranch. Today, I will be recognizing the AP Scholars. Advanced placement courses, by definition, are courses which cover the breadth of information, skills, and assignments found in corresponding college courses. They also align with the standards and expectations of leading liberal arts and research institutions. Finally, AP courses provide motivated and academically prepared students with the opportunity to study and learn at the college level. According to the College Board, nothing prepares students for college level studies more thoroughly than a rigorous, high quality high school education. Our goal at HRHS is to provide students with many opportunities to access AP courses, thus better preparing them for college and beyond. During the 1920 school year, we had 485 students take 925 exams. 75.4% of the students scored a three or higher on those exams. It's a lot of data to throw at you, but what that really is saying is that we had an amazing number of students perform incredibly well on their AP exams last year. This accomplishment is an incredible feat for our students who earned a three or higher. Not only have we surpassed our own expectations, we continue to beat the state and global averages as well. As a result of the 2020 exams, we also had 143 total AP scholars. 75 of these students were seniors last year and have since graduated. The remaining students will be honored in this presentation. An AP scholar is a student who receives a score of three or higher on three or more AP exams, and they are given that distinction of AP Scholar. Congratulations to the 61 students who received the AP Scholar honor, some of whom have graduated and are not listed. Again, congratulations, Falcons. I am Mrs. Julia Cayley, Assistant Principal at Highlands Ranch High School, and I am pleased to announce and recognize the AP Scholars with Honors, AP Scholars with Distinction, and National AP Scholar recipients. Students who receive an average score of at least 3.25 on all AP exams taken and scores of three or higher on four or more of these exams are considered AP Scholars with Honor. At this time, we would like to honor our 28 AP Scholars with Honor. Those who have graduated are not listed.
Students who receive an average score of at least 3.5 on all AP exams taken and scores of three or higher on five or more of these exams are considered AP scholars with distinction. At this time, we would like to honor our AP scholars with distinction. We have 54. Students who receive an average score of at least a four on all AP exams taken and a score of a four or higher on eight or more of these exams are considered national AP scholars. In 2017, we had 12 national AP scholars. In 2018, we had nine national AP scholars. For 2019, we had 11 national AP scholars. For 2020, we had nine national AP scholars, all of, who all of which who graduated in May. Congratulations to our national AP scholar recipients and congratulations once again to all of these outstanding students for their outstanding achievements in AP coursework. Hello again, I'm Caitlin Philemon, Academic Assistant Principal here at Highlands Ranch High School, and I'm honored to explain honor rolls. The admin team and staff here at Highlands Ranch High School continue to recognize the semester honor roll. Honor roll certificates celebrate student success after each semester and are based on their cumulative GPAs. Students who earn an honor roll certificate and recognition are divided into cumulative GPA levels the first being Blue on a Roll, which is for students with a cumulative GPA of a 3.5 to a 3.749. Black on a Roll is for students with a cumulative GPA of a 3.75 to a 3.99. And our final level for on a Roll is Silver on a Roll level, and that is for a cumulative GPA of a 4.0 and beyond. Honor Roll certificates for second semester of the 1920 school year were given to the students in their first hour class the two weeks before fall break. Congratulations to all students who received an honor roll certificate for all your hard work.
What an amazing slideshow. We want to thank all of you for joining us today in uh, our presentation <coughs> of our academic awards for our students. We really want to congratulate our 297 academic letter award winners. We also want to congratulate our 283 students who made the honor roll. And of course, <coughs> our 69 students, I promise it's not COVID, our 69 students who are AP scholars. What amazing accolades. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. All of you who earned your community service hours and those of you who are younger on a great trajectory, thank you for always giving back. It goes so much further than just taking care of yourself, but also taking care of our community. Every single person Every single name and every single award should be proud of the work that they did. Thank you to Mr. DeBolt, a fantastic faculty speaker, for reminding us of those things that we value and we cherish. And most importantly, kids, I hope you, our students, take time to thank your support system that has got you here. Take time to hug mom and dad maybe even that sibling who have supported you over the past couple of years, send an email to your teachers and thank them for their support, especially the ones you don't have this year. Far too often we keep going in life and we forget to take that moment to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, um, I also want to make sure that we give out a couple of our special thank you. Thank you to our administrative assistant, Christina Bosco, for all your work with all the awards, getting it all printed, putting it all together so we can get it out so these students have something to cherish and hold on to. A huge shout out to Melissa Muniz, who put together this slideshow. She worked tireless hours, but she wanted to give you something that you could remember and hold on to and think about when you talk about your academic success. And one of the biggest thank yous to Ms. Caitlin Philemon, our academic administrator who oversees these awards and this ceremony to make sure it is right, that all the little things are done right. It's easy to get lost in all the troubling times of today, to focus on some of the things going on out in the world it's a lot harder to remember some of the simple things, some of the simple things that make us who we are. Thank you for focusing on the simple things and making them extraordinary. I'm sure we've all heard that famous quote, what makes something ordinary extraordinary? That little extra. Thank you for always providing that little extra. Thank you for going above and beyond. Thank you to our staff. You guys are amazing. And uh, hey, Falcons, let's go do it. Let's have another great academic year so that next year in 2021, we can celebrate even more of you. Oh yeah. Highlands what? Highlands Ranch. Thank you for everything that you do. Have a great evening.